This is Dr. D. Kalandra Basha working as Associate Professor in the Department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Dindigal, Hyderabad. Today I am going to discuss the ARM instruction set under category branch instructions, interrupt instructions, program status register instructions, loading constants and conditional execution. The slides are prepared by referring the textbook ARM system developers guide designing and optimizing system software. The first one we will discuss about the branch instructions. A branch instruction changes the flow of execution or is used to call a subroutine. This type of instruction allows program to have subroutines if then else structures and loops. The change of execution flow forces the program counter that is PC to point to a, a new address. Here are the various branch instructions. Branch instruction B, branch with link BL, branch exchange BX, branch exchange with link BLX. The first instruction branch, the syntax of the instruction is B, optional condition followed by label. Branches are used to change the execution flow. The address label is stored in the instruction as a signed PC relate to offset and must be within approximately 32 MB of branch instruction. So if you have a program, current, currently the instruction which are it is there, this is executing and the address is there in PC, the control will be transferred to either to another location in the upward side or downward side or the control may be transferred to a subroutine. For this, the branch instructions will be used. The branch labels are placed at the beginning of the line and are used to mark the address that can be used later by the assembler to calculate the branch offset. The example B label name because these loops are address specific, no need to include the pre and post conditions addressing modes. The address label is stored in the instruction as a signed PC offset and it is within the 32 MB of branch instruction. Now we will see an example. B forward, forward is a label, add R1, R2, hash 4, add R0, R2, hash 2, add R3, R7, hash 4. Then forward, sub R1, R2, hash 4. So when this program is given for execution, the first instruction it is going to be faced is B forward. Once the forward label is given for B instruction, the control will be transferred to the label which are specified. So at this label, whatever the instruction is there, that will be executed by discarding the execution of add, 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 three add instructions, which were mentioned before forward label and after branch instruction. So when B instruction is executed or encountered, the control will be transferred to the label which are specified. So in this example, the label which is given as forward, so immediately the control will be transferred to this label. So at this label, whatever the instruction is there, that will be executed between B instruction and the label instruction, whatever the instructions are there, these will be skipped. Coming to example two, backward is a label, 
add instruction followed by subtraction again add instruction b backward so now the order of the execution is first the add r1 comma r2 hash 4 will be executed followed by sub r1 comma r2 comma hash 4 will be executed followed by add r4 comma r6 comma r7 will be executed once the branch instruction is encountered then the control will be transferred to the label which you have specified so in this the label is specified as backward so from here again the control will be transferred to here it will start executing add instruction sub instruction add instruction as this is an unconditional case so this loop is going to be iterated infinite number of times the forward branch instruction skips three instruction in the first example whereas in the second example the backward branch instruction creates an infinite loop the next instruction is bl which is branch with link the syntax of the instruction is bl conditional optional label the bl instruction is similar to the branch instruction b but overwrites the link register lr with a written address so when bl instruction is executed when the bl some label instruction is executed the lr register lr register will contain the instruction which is followed by bl instruction so whatever the address here we are having this will be loaded into lr and the control will be transferred to the label which are specified so the pc the program counter will loaded with the address which are specified after branch instruction and the link register lr is loaded with the address of the next instruction after the bl whatever the instruction is there this instruction address will be placed so after returning from here it can be executed the given program so this instruction mainly it is used for uh, calling a subroutine so when in the main program somewhere here we are having a subroutine call so that we can write using bl subroutine so when this instruction is encountered the control will be transferred from the main program to a subroutine in the subroutine what are the instructions are there that it will be executed it is like a sub program kind of thing after executing sub program or sub routine the control has to be transferred to the instruction which is followed by bl instruction so when this control is transferring from the main program to the sub routine whatever the address is there here i'll try to take address as mno this will be loaded into lr register and whatever the address here i have the address is abc is the address of sub routine so pc is loaded with abc and lr is loaded with mno abc is the address of the sub routine so once the program is executed after completion of the sub routine when it is returning to the main program the lr contains again it will be loaded into pc so that it will point to the instruction which is followed by bl instruction so the functionality of this instruction is pc will be loaded with the label which are specified lr link register is loaded with the address of the next instruction after the bl instruction it perform a subroutine call this example shows a simple fragment of code that branches to a subroutine using bl instruction to return from a subroutine you copy the link register to the pc example bl a subroutine cmp r1 comma hash 5 move equal r1 comma hash 0 somewhere here subroutine is placed which is having a few instructions right when this bl instruction is executed whatever the address whatever the address is there for this subroutine that will be loaded into pc and what are the instruction is there for cmp instruction that will be loaded into lr instruction after executing the subroutine the compare instruction address already we have loaded into lr register that will be placed again back into the program counter so that after executing bl sub program will be executed 
when it is written into the main program, the subsequent instruction which is in this example CMP will be executed. The next instruction is BX which is branch exchange. The syntax of the instruction is BX optional condition RM. The BX instruction uses an absolute address stored in the register RM. It is primarily used to branch to and from thumb code address. The T bit in the CPSR register is updated by the least significant bit of the branch register. So here the PC will be loaded with the value which you have placed in RM and added with F, 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 E and the thumb code T is assigned with RM and with 1. The T bit is also a bit exists in CPSR and it will be updated by the least significance bit of the branch register. The next instruction is BLX instruction, branch exchange with the link. The syntax of the instruction is BLX optional condition label or RM register. The BLX instruction uses an absolute address stored in the register RM. It is primarily used to branch to and from thumb code address. The BLX instruction update the T bit in the CPSR register with the least significant bit. Additionally, set the link register with the return instruction which is nothing but the address of the next instruction followed by BLX. The functionality of BLX instruction whether it is encounter the ARM processor, the label which are specified in the instruction that will be loaded into PC and the thumb bit in CPSR is equivalent to 1. Our PC is loaded with RM and added with 0x, FF, 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 FV. Then the thumb code is generated as RM and added with 1. The LR register as it is a link, the LR register contain the address of the next instruction after existing the BLX instruction. The next type of interrupts are software interrupt instructions. In ARM processor, we have the software interrupts instruction that is SWI. SWI stands for software interrupt instruction. It causes a software interrupt execution which provides a mechanism for applications to call operating system routines. The syntax of the instruction SWI condition the software interrupt type number that is SWI underscore number. When the processor execute the SWI instruction it set the program counter with the offset value as 8 in the vector table. The instruction also forces the processor mode into SVC mode instead of user mode which allow an operating system routine to be called in privilege mode. Each SWI instruction has an associated SWI number which is used to represent a particular function call or feature. The functionality of SWI instruction. So when the SWI instruction is encountered, the link register for SVC is loaded with the address of the instruction followed by SWI instruction. Whereas SW sorry, SPSR underscore SVC register is loaded with the CPSR register. Then the control is transferred to ISR so far that the PC is loaded with the 
vectors followed with the offset value 8. So, 8 offset will be added to vectors. Then the CPSR register will be loaded with the new values of SVC. Then CPSR 1 that is I that is for inter interrupt request to mask we are going to be right as CPSR i the bit is equal to 1. Since SWI instructions are used to call operating system routines, we need to some form of parameter passing. This is achieved using registers. Now we will see an example for SWI instruction. SWI call with SWI number 0x123456. So, in this example, the register R0 is used to pass the parameters as 12. The return values are also passed back via register. So, before executing the SWA instruction, which is having an offset of 8000, the CPSR register is having the flags are in this manner with user privilege. PC is updated with the value with the 8000. Next, LR register will store the address of the next instruction that is 003 FFFF. LR is pointed with the register R14 and R0 will have some parameter values we had to pass. So in this example, the parameter values they are passing is 1. So, after execution, the CPSR will be changed from the user privilege to SPC. Then the SPSR is loaded with the previous CPSR. The PC is loaded with the offset value as 8. The LR instruction will hold the address of the next instruction as SWI instruction is consist of 4 bytes. So, the LR is located with the 8004. The R0 that is parameter passed for SWI instruction is through R0 with the value of 12H. The next type of instructions are related to program status register instructions. This is PSR instruction register instructions. The ARM instruction set provides two instructions to directly control a program status register PSR. The MS MRS instruction transfers the contents of either the CPSR or SPSR into a register in the reverse direction. The MSR instruction transfers the content of registers into CPSR or SPSR. So, from CPSR or SPSR contents we can post into register by using MRS instruction. The reverse process, the contents of registers we can load into CPSR or SPSR instruction by using MSR instruction. Together, these instructions are used to read and write the CPSR and SPSR. The syntaxes for the program status registers instructions, MRS, optional condition, RD, either CPSR or SPSR, MSR, condition, RD, CPSR or SPSR with the fields and register R. MSR, RD, CPSR or SPSR fields either we can pass through register or we can pass through immediate data that we want to load. In the syntax, we can say a label called fields. This can be any combination of control or extension X status S and flags F. So, what are the instructions which are having? That we can have with the 
addition of one more character c is for control x is for extension s is for status and flags with f these fields are related to a particular regions in psr the format for psr byte fields is shown in a figure 1 the c field contains controls to the interrupt mask and the thumb state and the processor mode the lower 8 bits are control information which is consist of mode followed by thumb interrupt mask next one is extension which is 8 bit size status 8 bit size flags 8 bit size out of this 8 bits the upper 4 bits are given with n z c p now we will see the execution with respect to example m r s r1 comma cpsr b i c r1 comma r1 hash a t h now the next instruction we are going to be executed is m s r c p s r underscore c indicating it is control information r1 data so before executing this program that is b i c instruction the assume the cpsr contains are NZCVQIFT underscore SVC. After writing that is bit, bit clear with ATH, this it is going to be modified the eighth bit. It is for eighth bit. So in the field you can see 0 to 7. This is the eighth bit position. This we are placing as 1 and the remaining bits are zeros. So this will make change when you do the bit clear instruction so earlier the interrupt is active now it is in active state the msr first copies the capsr into r1 register the bic instruction clears b7 bit bit 0 bit 1 bit 2 bit 3 bit 4 bit 5 bit 6 bit 7 that is seventh bit b7 bits of r1 the register r1 is uh, copied back into the cpsr which enables irq interrupts in this example the code preserves all the other settings in the cpsr only and only modifies the ith bit in the control field related to interrupt this is example in SVC mode. In user mode, all CPSR bits can be read, but updation for condition flags, conditional flag that is F. The next one is loading constants. There is no ARM instruction to move a 32 bit constant into register directly. Since ARM instructions are 32 bit in size, they obviously cannot specify a general 32 bit constant. To aid programming, there are two pseudo instructions to move a 32 bit value into a register. Here are the various loading constant. The first one is LDR, load constant pseudo instruction. The next one is ADR, load address pseudo instruction. The first instructions we will see LDR which is load constant pseudo instruction. The syntax of the instruction is LDR RD comma equivalent to constant. The load constant pseudo instruction write the 32 bit constant into a register RD whatever the instructions are available. It deals to a memory read if the constant cannot be encoded using either instruction. So here RD is assigned with the 32 bit constant which you are providing in the instruction. Example LDR R0 comma equivalent to 0x FF. So in this case FF is a constant that we are loading into R0 
the same instruction or the same functionality we can achieve by using move instruction mov r0 comma hash 0x fm if the constant is more uh, around 32 bit size move instruction is not sufficient so loading a 32 bit constant like 0x ff 00 ff ff into the register r0 using ldr instruction ldr r0 comma pc hash the constant number 8 underscore pc this constant number is here we are writing is dcd that is 0x ff 00 ff ff this example involves a memory access to load the constant which can be expensive for time critical proteins the table one gives the ldr pseudo instruction conversion ldr r0 comma 0x ff so directly we can load this one with move instruction move r0 comma hash 0x ff if you write the instruction ldr r0 comma is equal to 0x 5555555 this is same as that of writing ldr r0 comma pc 12 bit offset next loading the constant 0x ff 00 ff ff using mvn move negate once complement it is going to do complement of this so mvn r0 comma hash wherever one is there that we have to replace as zero so here we have only two values that is f f equivalent is one 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 the complement of it it is given as zero 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 so in the mvn wherever f is there that it will be replaced with zero and if f is equal to zero zero complement of this will get as one 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 so wherever zero zero is there that it will be loaded as one 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 so ff that will be written as 00 00, 00 as ff 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 that is four zeros before execution mvn instruction the r0 content is not required because we are loading with the 32 bit content whatever the value it is existing that it is will be overwritten with the value which you are having uh, that is 32 bit value which we are going to load the next instruction is LDR instruction, load address pseudo instruction. The syntax of the instruction is ADR, RD comma label. Load pseudo address pseudo instruction writes a relative address into the register which will be encoded using program counter relative expression. So RD will be loaded with the 32 bit relative address here we are going to be write the address value in the previous course we are going to be write a constant so ldr it is used for writing a constant and adr is used to write a constant which is a address adr instruction or address relative instruction places the address of the given label into the register rd using a pc relative add or subtract the next category is conditional execution. Most ARM instructions are conditionally executed. The condition is optional. The instruction only execute if the condition code flags pass a given condition or test. By using conditional execution instructions, the performance and code intensity can be increased. This condition field is a two letter mnemonic appended to the instruction mnemonic. Suppose if I have move instruction for equality we can write as move eq. This instruction will perform move if whatever the let us consider we wrote r0 comma r1. So if R0 and R1 or if I take this one as Rn and this one is Rm, the move instruction will be takes place if Rn is equivalent to Rm. First it will check for condition. If it is true, then move will be takes place. Otherwise the execution will not be takes place for transferring of the data. The default mnemonic is AL. 
or always execute. Conditional execution reduces the number of branches which also reduces the number of pipeline flushes and thus improves the performance of the executed code. The conditional execution depends upon two components. One is condition field, the second one is conditional flags. The conditional flags are exist in the CPSR register whereas the conditional field is located in the instruction after mnemonic we are going to add two letters which is optional. Example add instruction with EQ condition appended. So if you have a simple add instruction add R0, comma R1, comma R2. This instruction will add R1 plus R2 and the result will be stored R0 without checking any condition. This instruction will be executed when the zero flag in the CPSR is set to 1. Only comparison instruction and data processing instructions with S suffix appended to the mnemonic update the fields of CPSR register. So in this session, we have discussed the various ARM supported instructions for branch instructions, software interrupt instructions, program status register instructions, load constant and conditional execution. Thank you all. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.